Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I've got an affordable spring gun combo from Pelpax on the test bench. But first up, I make targeting rabbits by night. Right, I might after rabbits tonight and they are pretty abundant on this farm. Now apart from munching their way through the grass crop, they're also causing quite a lot of damage to the banks with their burrowing. Now I spent quite a lot of time targeting them through the summer and accounted for quite a few, but there are still plenty left. But at this time of year, with darkness closing in early, night vision tends to be the way to target them when their habits turn a little bit more nocturnal. My gun choice for tonight is the Daystate Red Wolf. Now this one's FAC rated, it's 2.2 calibre, producing just over 30 foot pounds and it should give me just a little bit more reach and a little bit more hitting power out tonight. Now it's a very accurate gun, particularly when I'm going to be shooting off a bipod as I am this evening. Um, another advantage is I've got the 10 shot magazine in there. I often shoot it in single shot mode because I think it's a little bit more precise. But tonight, been out shooting in the dark, I don't want to be fumbling around reloading, so I've got the multi-shot mag in there. Um, I've paired that with an MTC Mamba scope, that's the Mamba light, which is, tends to be my uh, regular scope on this setup, and that's held on with the usual sports mat uh, scope mounts. Uh, the night vision unit tonight is the Night Sight Artec Wolf. Now, the great advantage of this over a dedicated night vision scope is the fact that it just enables me to convert the day scope that I've got on here and save me from messing around changing this setup. It means that all of my aiming points remain exactly the same as usual. Um, it also serves as a pretty useful spotter because if I wind down the magnification on the scope, I have a fairly wide field of view and a wide depth of, depth of field, um, which does really help when you're trying to spot distant rabbits. Also, because you haven't got your eye pressed right against it, it doesn't tend to spoil your natural ability to see in the dark so much. Um, now, the only big snag with the uh, night sight unit is the fact that because you're looking through the screen, you do have to shoot with a head up shooting position. Um, the best way around that is to either use sticks or as I'm using tonight, a bipod. Um, it means I'm gonna have to lay down on my belly and get wet on this soaking wet grass when I take shots but it does mean that I'll be rewarded with really nice steady shots. Right, so that's the kit. What we need to try and do now is be as quiet as possible. I'm gonna switch my headlamp off so we're right under the cover of darkness. We'll head off, see if we can't find a few rabbits. As I've explained before, the light you can see on the night vision unit is only apparent because we're using a night vision camera. It's caused by the beam of the infrared illuminator, which is barely visible to the naked eye. Nothing out that time. Now the, uh, the tactics are literally just for us to walk around as quietly as we can, flick the night vision on every so often, have a shine range, see if we can pick out any rabbits. Now this unit's got a pretty good detection range, so we won't just be looking for eye shine, we should get a pretty good look at the rabbits if they are out. Now typically, the curse of the air gun show has struck again. Whenever we come out shooting rabbits at night, we get a still, clear night, far from ideal. You really want a bit of wind making a bit of noise, to mask the sound that we're making, and preferably some really good cloud cover so it's properly dark. But, as I said at the outset, there are usually quite a few rabbits on this farm, so we'll stick with it and I'm sure we'll get a few. Couple 
of rabbits out. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer just to make sure. I'm trying to move as quietly as I can. It's not easy with a cameraman in tow, but I want to get in close to avoid taking a risky shot. This is the moment of truth. It was worth making the effort to creep in closer as we now have a rabbit comfortably within range. Well, there were still two rabbits out. One actually bolted off from behind the one that I'd shot, literally as soon as the pellet hit home but it wasn't hanging around. But I've nailed one, about 35 metres, so a really straightforward shot with this setup. Let's go and get it. It's always worth having a conventional light source for tasks like picking up. I like to wear a headlamp as it provides light wherever I look. The rabbit gets a squeeze to empty its bladder before it goes in the bag. There wasn't much in this one, but you don't want any pee tainting the meat. Closing in like this is always much easier when there's a bit of a breeze blowing, as the sound of the wind in the trees helps to disguise any clicks and rattles from your gear. And there's another one that actually moved back a little bit from where I'd initially spotted it in some slightly longer cover, but it was sat bolt upright, offering me a really nice clear shot. Probably about the same range as the first one, maybe a little bit closer, but again, pretty straightforward shot. Let's go and get it. Another really cleanly headshot rabbit there. Now you see I'm just squeezing them down. 
and this one's actually empty, but I just give them a squeeze down the belly just to make sure that the bladder's empty so that the urine doesn't, temp, uh, doesn't taint the meat. And my intention is that I'll do one paunching session at the end of the night, so I'll do all the rabbits in one go, leave the guts out in the field, the badgers and foxes will clear it up by the morning now. I don't know if this has been picked up on the audio, but there are owls going absolutely crazy here tonight, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's putting the rabbits a bit on edge. Owls or no owls, I'm determined to put more bunnies in the bag and I won't be giving up for a while. It's not difficult to spot rabbits with this setup, so it doesn't take very long to sweep the fields. There's nothing this time, so it's on to the next one. This one is a bit longer, so the shot is going to need a touch of aim off. What a lovely clean kill. That one was a bit further away, probably about 50 metres now. I was moaning earlier about it being so still tonight, but it does help when you need to take a longer shot like that one. It just needed a little bit of hold over and it absolutely polaxed it. That rabbit did not know what had hit it. It's not just rabbits you see going about their business when you're out in the fields after nightfall. Well, it's not what we're after, but that badger did trundle past a distant rabbit that didn't seem to be too bothered, so I'm just going to have another look. We'll try and stalk in and get a shot at it. Well, I said that rabbit didn't look too bothered, but it's cleared off now, so we're going to have to go and look for another one. After a fairly long blank spell, it looks like a rare stroke of luck is going to throw up a very easy opportunity. Wallop. That 
was very lucky. Came over a bit of a brow, which had obviously kept us nicely off the skyline because although it's night time, because it's clear, we are probably still getting skyline tonight. Anyhow, came over the brow, thought I'd pop the night vision on for a bit of a scan. There was a rabbit right out, not very far away. So I settled down, really nice, straightforward shot. Let's pick it up. takes us up to four and although in the final edit it's probably going to look to you like we achieved that pretty quickly we have been out here for hours it's getting very late Nicky's got an early start in the morning so I think I'm going to wrap it up here let him head for home I'm probably going to give it another hour and see if I can't maybe get one or two more Night vision gear bringing the bunnies to book again there and now it's the air gun show news. This is the air gun show news. The British shooting show is going north once again. As well as the February show at the NEC, the British shooting show will also take place in Manchester at the event city venue on the 19th and 20th of September next year. This second event will be known as the British Shooting and Countrymen Show, and show organisers are so confident in their new venue they've already booked it for three years. And they said you can expect all the attractions the main British Shooting Show provides, including manufacturers, retailers, air gun ranges, demos, debates and more. A general election has been called for the 12th of December, and Basque has urged all its members to vote for shooting when polling day arrives. The UK's largest shooting organisation has set up a dedicated polling website so you can check whether your local candidates support shooting. And if their views aren't known, you can lobby them using the direct email links. Check out the website now at basque.org.uk slash election 2019. With less than six months to go until the Northern Shooting Show 2020, organisers have confirmed once again that under-16s will get free entry to the show when accompanied by a paying adult. Adults can get advanced tickets for just £13 from the Northern Shooting Show website. The show will once again fill the indoor halls at the Yorkshire Event Centre, as well as a huge clay line and other outdoor areas. It takes place on the 8th and 9th of May next year. And finally, with voting open for the Great British Shooting Awards 2020, we take a look at one of the categories you can have your say in. This week, it's the Optics Product of the Year under £1,000, and the nominees are the Bushnell Forge Scope, the Hawk Air Max SF, the Leupold VX3i, the Nightforce SHV 3-12x56 and the Vortex Diamondback Tactical Scope. You can have your say in who wins, head to greatbritishshootingawards.com to vote. That was the Egg and Show News. I'm a big fan of the affordable combo deals that Pelpacks put together and we've got what looks like a pretty good one here. This is the Rabbit Sniper Mark II and it includes a gun, a zoom scope with mounts, a silencer, pellets and a padded gun case. It retails for £189.99 which sounds like brilliant value for money. The kit is based around a 22 caliber SMK XS19 Super Grade. It's a brake barrel springer and it churns out power levels very close to the UK legal limit. It's 116 centimetres long with the silencer fitted 
and the full combo weighs a very manageable 3.8 kilos. It is a pretty long adult sized air gun but it feels very good in the shoulder. The gun is equipped with a stained hardwood stock. It's a classic sporter design with quite a long forend. Now it's fairly nicely grained but there is no checkering or stippling. It feels perfectly good in the dry but I do imagine that I might just miss that extra grip in the wet. The pistol grip isn't particularly steep and my big hands would probably fit better if there were a deeper scallop to accommodate the base of my thumb. That said, it still sets me up perfectly well for the trigger. Now the stock looks as if it's ambidextrous, but the cheek piece is accentuated more for right-handers. Most importantly, it's high enough to give you great eye alignment when using a scope. Overall stock design is actually pretty good and it should be comfortable for most people to shoot. The butt section is capped with a rubber recoil pad, which helps to soak up the modest kick from this air gun's firing cycle. The build quality of this gun is reassuringly solid and there are no disconcerting rattles when you give it a shake. The finish of the metalwork is tidy and all of the engineering appears to be pretty neat. The rifled steel barrel is fitted with a chunky backdraft silencer, which apart from helping to stifle the muzzle report, also serves as something substantial to grab onto when cocking the gun. The gun is supplied with a 3 to 9 by 40 zoom scope and a decent set of two-piece mounts. That zoom range is just about perfect for this type of air gun. And the scope even has a mill dot reticle and flip-up lens covers. The windage and elevation dials are finger adjustable and turn with very positive clicks. Open sights do come supplied but the scope really renders them redundant and the front element needs to be removed to fit the silencer anyway. Now the rear element was still fitted when I received this gun but I've removed it because I think it looks a lot neater without it in front of the scope. I was very surprised by just how smooth and easy this gun is to cock, especially when you consider that it's producing muzzle energy of around 11.4 foot pounds. Loading is direct to the breech and the lockup snaps home very securely when you swing the barrel back into position. It's not really fair to be too picky when it comes to triggers on affordable spring guns, but this one is actually surprisingly good. It's a two-stage unit with a metal blade that has a very nice profile. Now the first stage doesn't have a lot of travel and there is a little bit of creep in the second stage but it still breaks very predictably. There's a resettable manual safety catch positioned right in front of the trigger blade. Rather too close for my liking because I don't like having to fumble around close to the trigger when I'm trying to make a gun safe. That said, it does what it's supposed to. It's safe when it's in the rearward position and then you push it forwards when you're ready to shoot. So, that's what you get for well under £200 with the Rabbit Sniper Mark II kit from Pellpacks. Let's punch some paper and I'll show you what it shoots like.
Wow, it's actually a very nice gun to shoot and for an affordable Springer, it's got a pretty smooth firing cycle. Now one thing I would say first of all, this gun comes as a kit and it does come supplied with pellets. Now I've experimented a little bit because there's no guarantee that a, uh, the pellets that a gun comes supplied with are going to be the best ones with its barrel. So I've chopped and changed a bit and I've settled on Daystate Rangemaster Sovereigns, which by, are by far the tightest grouping pellet that I've tried so far with this gun. Um, typically the wind's picked up a bit for our range testing. I've pulled the target into 20 metres, which I think, to be honest with you, is only fair for a, for a brake barrel springer anyway. And that's a relatively tight group there, probably about a one inch group, all pretty much on target. And actually, out to that range, I say that this gun has got what it takes to tackle live quarry. Um, I should imagine it would be also be a really good fun plinking gun and very much at home on the garden range. So that's the Rabbit Sniper Mark II kit from Pellpacks, which I think is fantastic value for money. Especially when you take into account that you get a gun, a zoom scope with mounts, a silencer, pellets and a padded gun case, all for just £189.99. Now it is a fairly robust gun that I reckon should stand up to unforgiving use in the hands of a beginner, but I also think it's more than just a novice's air gun. Um, especially when you take into account its looks and performance, I think this is an air gun that you're probably going to want to hang on to. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.